The greatest feeling a man can ever experience is that of fulfilling his dreams, to see the works of his hands succeed. That feeling is what we feel right now with Urban Prime. What started off as a dream today is reality for not just the dreamers, but the world at large. Through obstacles and setbacks, we have pushed hard. We have fought our way through to ensure Urban Prime is not just a wish or a dream, but is reality. The launch of Urban Prime 1 in August 2019 was solidified by the aim to create a lifestyle that gives off comfort, class, luxury, value, and exclusivity. A lifestyle that has indeed redefined and undoubtedly elevated the status of the Abraham Adesonia to the Ogombo community through not just Urban Prime 1, but Urban Prime 2, 3, and 4. We cannot leave out the COVID 19's impact on the Urban Prime project. Was it challenging? Yes. But did we cross that hurdle? Absolutely, and even better. Urban Prime features a feature and drainage systems, access to the internet, a serene environment, leisure setups like the swimming pool and the gym, carefully detailed streets, 24 7 lightning system, and a really good security system that has a 24 hour security surveillance. With over 48 hectares of land, with 2,000 homes to be delivered by the end of Q4 2024, we have delivered over 500 homes, over 500 trees planted, over 1,000 homes in progress with scheduled deliveries. With residents currently occupying their spaces and living in their homes in Urban Prime, so far, we've had amazing feedbacks. No wonder in 2021 to 2022, Urban Prime was voted the best residential development in Nigeria by the African Property Awards. A lot has gone into the emergence of Urban Prime and behind it all are the best of persons and brain works. When we started the residential development, we wanted to do something very different. We wanted to build functional homes, but we also want a community impact-driven project. So, something that can transform a community. Something that has not existed within a community before. And that was what was in our mind when we were conceptualizing on the urban prime project. So we're quite purpose driven in terms of the project that we tried to develop. And what was very important to us was to do something that will be different from what is already existing. So there was, a, uh, I mean, we had a lot of research uh, before activating on the project. So from how, what type of home, how do we want the template to look like? Uh, how do we want the infrastructure to look like? From power infrastructure to water infrastructure to the road infrastructure to the recreational infrastructure to the home in itself, the functionality of the house. So we had a very strong belief and we had to back that with action. And it was one word, I mean, one key sentence, building to last. One is something that would uh, be very, very transformational to that environment. So, and that we're able to achieve with the urban prime development and with what the project has been so far and the, and the amount of mileage the project has gotten. So, it's, it's, it, it has proved to us that we actually got on the right track when we we're conceptualizing the whole urban prime project. Also, we're looking at future plans, the, the Fort Milan Bridge setup and how that road, Okwanja Road, connects to uh, Orchid Road and all. So there are about four different uh, exits for that location and all of that. So our first, uh, our first development on that road was in 2017, but it was just site and service. So I'd taken a very close uh, observation 
on that environment, you know. And before we got into that environment, 20, 20, uh, 2019, it was, a, it was a very dead road. Like, it had fewer number of, you know, cars moving on that road. By 7 p.m., it's already very dark. There's no life on that road and all of that. So, we just wanted something that would give life to that community and all that. And that would be coming that will also provide employment and opportunity for people within that environment. And I'll give them a new fear. Because the major belief that people have is that um, anything that exists on that axis should be should not be of great quality or should not be of uh, should not be of good value or should not be. so you know so we had a different mindset entirely. So we wanted to create something different within that environment. So uh, we did a very yeah, deep case study on the Ibamani Senya corridor and all of that, Ogumbo generally, you know. COVID-19 affected both positively and negatively as well. But, you know, as an entrepreneur, is uh, you have to learn to glide with the type and find how to make the best use of that situation. You know, different things that, that impacted on the project COVID brought about inflation and all of that, FX rates and that, all these things and all. But uh, it was a very difficult task to set out to do 2,000 homes. That is a major step in reducing the deficit that we have in the housing sector. But it, but it was a major, major move. And it was a very audacious and a bold, uh, and a bold step for the company. But we didn't believe that it was going to be possible at all. We know that it is possible, but we didn't see a lot of challenges. COVID was not in the picture where we started. We didn't, we didn't see this much inflation. It, it wasn't in the data. Uh, we didn't see all the other uh, battles we will go through with artisans, getting the right skilled labor, uh, working with the right contractor working with right suppliers and manufacturers and all of that. So we didn't see how importation is going to affect pricing factors and all these things. So these are issues that we've had to, you know, surmount and then make sure that we keep moving uh, with how difficult the environment can be to do business. So we just have to keep, the vision is clear. The goal is very important to us at Landway, and we just have to make it happen without uh, and knowing that quality is very important to us and is key and fundamental to what we represent at Landway. So all these factors are very important and all these elements are the things that we have to put to play uh, with the Urban Prime project and some other projects that we have as well. But Urban Prime, our biggest residential development and you know, top of our mind, and you know we keep moving and you know so interesting at the beginning it was a bit challenging to identify the right partners the right vendors um, to work with because uh, we identified from the beginning that um, quality was essential to our you know construction so we needed to shortlist contractors that understand that and also value quality work as well. And in some instances, we had to terminate some contractors' um, contracts during the process because we weren't satisfied with the work that they were doing. Uh, so I would say that, you know, it, it was a bit challenging initially, but uh, what is important is that um, we, we stay grounded to our objectives of building quality, um, quality construction. And as such, we were able to put parameters in place to hold our vendors accountable. And over the period of uh, construction, we've had to modify our contractors' contracts multiple times uh, because we learn from different scenarios what may happen on site. And then we make adjustments in the contract to mitigate against a repeat of that same issue or this challenge that we, we face. Uh, but overall, um, I think that it's been great. It's been a huge learning experience. And um, we've been able to work with good um, partners as well that we know will work with them, you know, at, with other projects um, that uh, we, we have ongoing. The Ogombo community, I mean, we've had a really 
awesome relationship with the people, the locals within the community, um, the ballet of Ogombo, um, as well as even the law enforcement, the police, Ogombo police station. Uh, they, they've received the Urban Prime project with open arms. Um, I, I think that the success of the, the project has also been because of that. Um, we haven't had any issues, um, thankfully, uh, with, you know, community clashes or issues with Omo um, It's been quite peaceful um, being in Ogombo. And also, I think they also see the benefits of a project like Urban Prime um, in terms of, you know, this project has put Ogombo on the map. Um, and it was after Urban Prime came um, into that neighborhood that the government came in to fix the Ebrama de Soya roundabout, which is a huge achievement. And it is, the, the project has also opened up a lot of commercial activities as well on that road, and as well as other projects um, as, as come up after Urban Prime. So I think overall it's been beneficial to the Ogombo community, but they, they've been, you know, awesome um, neighbors, I would say, yeah. For the urban prime project, our major challenge was uh, the inflation. The inflation rate in Nigeria is currently, that's in the rocks and it's been overboard for the past few years. So um, infl inflation directly goes to our cost of materials. Most of materials that are being purchased for production, they are either being manufactured here or they are being imported. Another major challenge is foreign exchange. Um, materials that are coming in from outside the country, like the reinforcement, every day, like um, reinforcement today can be 410, tomorrow morning it's 430, following day we have 510 per ton. So, I mean, major challenges are inflation, which directly eats the cost of materials, which in essence makes our cost of construction skyrocket at the slightest change. So, uh, major challenges, yes, that would be, like I've said, inflation, then the foreign exchange rate as well for materials that are being brought in from outside the country. Um, so uh, we put some um, methods or some, um, yes, yeah, some methods in place um, to be able to fight this. Number one would be bulk purchases. So for our materials, instead of buying in bids, um, we leverage on bulk purchases. For example, if I want to buy cement, if I'm buying Dangote, which is what we usually use, um, I go directly to the manufacturer and buy directly from them. So one, getting directly from the manufacturer, it reduces the price. Two, I'm buying in bulk, so I leverage on my bulk purchases to get lower costs, which in turn will help me to leverage on um, reducing my construction project cost. Then um, another thing we have also leveraged on to beat these um, challenges is also to forecast. You know, we look at price trends in the construction industry. For example, if my cement rate is going higher and higher, then I need to know how many bags of cement I need per this period and then buy it beforehand. As much as, you know, we don't, we, we as a brand, we've never gone below quality, but we improve on, based on the feedback we receive from our clients, we improve on our designs, we improve on our construction methods to, uh, you know, to ensure that quality is sustained. Um, the kind of materials we use, the kind of finishing we use, and our attention to details. Please, details underlined. Attention to details, very um, meticulous attention to details. And with that, we're able to control quality. We have a, a, a quality control um, you know, team that normally, in, you know, insist on quality with we, the architects. I actually worked with the procurement department um, on the Urban Prime 1 project, particularly at the beginning and one of the things that we did was to ensure the quality of the materials purchased. Um, we made sure that we get the best of materials, um, our reinforcements. We did proper tests on them to be sure that we are buying the right quality. The cement, the sand, the blocks, um, quite a number of them. It was quite challenging because we had a lot of units to finish at the same time. So we're buying in large volume sometimes. You'd have to buy 5,000, 6,000 blocks in a single day. So it was quite some work, but I mean, we were able to ensure that um, we purchased the right kind of materials. So it was towards the end, 
And I came in as the head of project and we had to implement certain processes to ensure um, that quality is achieved, um, ensuring that we snag units properly. We, we improved on our supervision um, to ensure that the artisans, the masons, are doing the right thing to ensure that the quality of materials being used by contractors um, are top notch. So it's been quite a wonderful experience. The GMD is always hyped on quality, always talking about quality, and um, we've had to follow in that line. And it, we, we've been on that path so far. At Langway, we encourage uh, going the extra mile for clients to meet their needs and their needs. That's what we do daily on the job. Feedbacks from our Urban Prime 1 subscribers have been really amazing. Uh, from how serene the environment is to security and proximity to, to the city, to uh, markets, to shopping malls and the Lagos life itself. We've also received feedbacks that have um, helped us with design uh, some of our I mean, projects after the Urban Prime and feedbacks that have also helped us modify our processes as an organization. My name is Bayer Diayeleso, and I'm a realtor with Landway since its inception. And um, Landway, working with Landway generally has been so good, so good, so easy. And way back when, before Landway came in, we've we've been working with different real estate companies and all that until Landway came in with different innovation, different strategy, different thing to actually ignite the industry. And my experience with Landway in developing Urban Prime 1 um, was phenomenal because I, right from the first day where this place was, where this place was launched and it was Bush and all that, I was there and uh, we saw the way the place kept changing as time goes on and um, it was, it was, it was like a, like a miracle, like a miracle because I passed this road very well and I know how bad this road was. I know how people don't want to come down this road even once it's seven o'clock, but with Urban Prime on this road, it's like, um, a light in, in darkness and all that. And right from then, it's been it's been improving. And we have Urban Prime 2, Urban Prime 3, Urban Prime 4. And I believe um, this road should actually be named after Urban Prime. And concerning my clients who bought into Urban Prime, a lot of them will actually tell you, Bio, if it's not land with property, I don't want it even till now. Um, a lot of my clients who bought into Urban Prime 1 and had gotten their houses, even those who are not staying here, who rented out their houses, are, I think a lot of them have gotten um, second rental income from their property. And each time they think of their property in Urban Prime 1, they call me and say, Bye, God bless you and uh, thank you for introducing Urban Prime 1 to me. Thank you for introducing Landway to me because none of them had ever regretted investing into Urban Prime 1 and Landway in particular. One thing I want to tell anyone and everyone is if you're thinking of investing into properties, Landway is the go-to because um, I can categorically say Urban Prime 1 is actually my second home. I have so many clients who bought into it to stay here. I have friends who had even rented from, from my clients. And I have clients who have turned to family who wants to welcome me into their homes anytime, any day, and will tell me, Bio, you've done a good job for introducing Urban Prime to me. With the great facilities and um, the, the infrastructures, the environment, the serene environment in total, it's been wonderful. 
Okay, my name is Yetunde Salami. I'm a realtor in Lagos. I've been in real estate for a while. I actually started my real estate experience with Landway a few years ago. That time I was still working with a bank. So, you know, I was shoveling between marketing and then real estate and advertising. And then I met Mr. Wally and then we started selling for, I started selling for him. Um, my experience has been one of a kind because all through that time, it was a very, very beautiful experience for me selling real estate for the first time. Landway brought in something that is a, a kind of unique and different and it kind of set the pace on a whole lot of experience as regards real estate. So starting with um, Landway was a very beautiful thing for me because I got to learn um, a lot of things like uniqueness. Selling for Landway has been a wonderful experience, all, all, all true. Urban Prime One, wow. It was a whole new level for me as a person because before it was land, land, land and some houses. But Urban Prime One was unique for me in particular. It's like a baby to me because I remember when I used to come into this place newly, it was all water and sand. And I remember myself, I was standing on the heap of sand there and I would be screaming my lungs out, telling people, buy your Urban Prime One, buy this thing. You know, a lot of people bought into it. They, they, they saw beyond the water, they saw beyond the sand. And then to the glory of God, they keyed into Urban Prime One and gradually we started building. It was amazing to me, you know, for me to see my clients key into a project. And within the next six, seven, eight months, the project was ready. Within the next one year, it was ready. It was amazing. And from then onward, I determined in my mind that, uh, wow, this is a good business. This is a good thing to do. This is a good company to relate with. And um, Urban Prime has a kind of special softness in my heart because I saw it from scratch, like I said, from nothing till it became what it is today. Every time I still come into Urban Prime, I still feel that kind of sense of achievement. Like, I built this place kind of a feeling. It is so real to me. I and mean, I just feel it every time. Even today, I've been to one of my clients' houses that is still like 95% ready. And I still got the feeling like, wow, just look at this place. And I don't miss what in telling people about how we started, how it grew, and where we are today. So my name is Mrs. Obosaya Abiola. So I'm a resident in Urban Prime One Estate. So, so far that I've been living in Urban Prime One, my experience so far has been very nice. You know, where I was coming from, there was all these tight road streets everywhere, neat. You know, you have people doing all the work and everything keeps running. Security, they are really trying. I'm signing their water supply, yeah, I guarantee you, you will really love it. The electricity, in fact, you know, some of my family, when they come, they're just like, uh -uh, they don't even have lights here at all. Your kids, is it that they don't know this, there's no light? I say, ah, they don't know it too, that, <laughs> that even if they want to know it, maybe it takes just few, under few seconds, the light is back. So they don't know anything, they don't know anything about darkness. So it's an estate that I will, I will say, no, they are really trying in Nigeria. Ah, hey. <laughs> God, Urban is really trying. It's very safe to raise your kids in Urban Prime One. Or any of the Urban, any of the land ways. I believe so because I'm also staying it in um, one of their residences here. So they are really trying. You can't just, nobody can just come into your house without the securities notifying you that social person is coming. Even if your number is off, then definitely you have to stay outside. So I don't know. But you just have to make sure that there is an information passed across before anything, like anything can come into your place and your privacy. So it's really private and it's secured. So I really enjoy their security. It's nice. Raising your kids here, you know, school bus coming in freely without any traffic jam or uh, the road is bad or the rain. You know, most times on island, the roads here are always very tough. It's not always fine. 
But when it comes to this place, their drainage, everything is okay. You can't even see water. I don't want to know if it's that seven days rain that comes in. It will not disturb you. You're free to go out. Your kids are free to go out to play in the estate. Nothing like you're scared of kidnappers to pick up your child without notifying. You can leave them. They can play and stroll out with, you know, grandma, grandpa. And they'll come in sound and say, the light everywhere, their water is pure. You know, I used to tell my husband that I can't stay on the highland. Though. Their water is crazy. It's poor. They have a bad network. But when I got to this place, they told me that don't worry, everything is fine. And just as he predicted, he was 100% correct. The water is top-notch. It is clean. You can drink it if you want to. You know, their network also, in fact, ah, <laughs> I've stayed on this lake here, and I wasn't pleased with it when I was staying with my uncle. You know, their water there, when literally like this, everywhere flood. You can't even take your car out before you, know, you start repairing cars. Nothing of such is happening here. Their area, how to get to their place is 100% okay. The roads are fine. You really have fun when you're here. They have different things that you can use. They have their gym. You know, when you are full or uh, like you have things running on your head and you just need to clear off, you can go there. There's nobody that is going to hold you for heat. And any other person can come in there to say, oh, okay, I want to accept the residents. That's the only people that are allowed to use their, use that. So you can't just say you're seeing different kind of faces to come and use them. No. So that is why it's secure. The security is, even some of those areas that they are still working on, you can't see the laborers coming in without writing their information and their passageway, the pass through to come in. Keke Napes is a no, no, no area. When I first came in, I was like, ah, Keke has to come in. Now, why would you be saying like this? I said, madam, it's not allowed. This and that. Before I knew it, I was, I got used to it. You know, I have to just tell my nanny to make use of Uber or I tell the driver to pick her up from the market for those things that wants to come in. So it's very secure. Even me, I know it's, it's for the best for me. So I won't even dispute that. I really enjoyed their service so far. I'm so far. Hey, oh, uh, the father of the owner of the so we are, you know, I'm saying right now. I'm a landlord myself in the mainland. And I've got um, um, about 10 flats <laughs> in the mainland. And um, I have another house in Festac. So because of proximity to my children, most of whom are you know, staying within the locality, you know, they moved myself and their mom down, down here. And since we came down here in May last year, um, it has been a fantastic you know, experience. Uh, this estate is indeed very, very neat. And the safety you know, is quite, uh, you know, the administration is very, very nice you know, indeed. Very, very nice indeed. Um, Maybe during the course of um, you know the interview, I'll be able to tell you more of my uh, experience and the advice you know I need to offer uh, to to you, you know, for uh, better uh, improvement. I would like to encourage all tenants. Or in this um, you know, unit uh, to cooperate with um, the administration and then to live peacefully you know, with them because the environment, like I told you earlier, is indeed very, it's very neat. In the first case, one thing which uh, I first admired when I came down here is, you know, the serenity of this uh, atmosphere. No taxi, no motorcycle. Um, movement is very free. And um, uh, as an elderly person, and as, an, uh, as a sportsman, you know, I like the environment because I do keep it. I move around, you know, in the morning, in the evening without any molestation, yeah? without having to uh, run against 
uh, uh, Okada riders or Molwe or uh, Taxi or Marwa. I really enjoy it. Very peaceful. Very, very peaceful. It's just like uh, like atmosphere in London. Uh, because I've been to almost all the parts of the world. And after that, we all ran the whole world. Talk less of uh, Africa and, and Nigeria. I have to advise the management uh, in one or two you know, areas. Um, this is a very good environment. And for security, you know, sake. I will personally advise the management to introduce identification cards to all uh, occupants. Maybe two per house. Two per house. So that when you are going out, you show your card. When you are coming in, you show your, 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 your card. If you are two or three living in the house, anybody who wants to go out to carry the, the card for identification. Then, um, secondly, the main road to this um, environment, uh, I don't know, uh, if you have any connection with the uh, local government uh, council here, if you have any connection with local government council, I will want you, you know, to please um, liaise with them. As this road started very well, but right now there are so many gorges, so many pitfalls. You have to link with the uh, politicians, especially the local government council. I was wondering why the government has not even started, you know, to uh, 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 repair, you know, the, the, the road. It's just too bad. Uh, and you are the closest you know, to them. We want you to meet you know, the local government council and even approach, you know, the, the state. That is a combo road. It's a very good road, very neat, very attractive. When we started, uh, Initially, but right now, too many bumps. Huh? It will soon turn into the road will soon turn into a swimming pool <laughs> because this is raining season. So please, yes, with the local government council and the state government. My name is Eugene Emmanuel. I'm one of the engineers that worked at Urban Primary State. I actually started it with the supervision of my manager then, Regina Omoni. I could remember there was a day an engineer came around, I think he was working somewhere else, around that area. He came and said, are we going to, to, uh, to shine all the water in this estate, all this and that? Look at the topography of the land, be that the road is very high compared to the, to the land itself. Are we going to fill the whole area, filling about two meters, three meters, yeah, about. But we, we, don't, we don't see it as a problem because immediately we enter the place, we already see the solution. With all the simulations which we did, we were able to perfect it. There are so many people in the, in the estate now that, that doesn't even know how do you water in the estate? Do leave the estate. But to God be the glory, with proper design, we get it done. You know, people that live in that area three, four years ago that left, maybe they traveled during that period. I believe if they get there today, they won't believe what they will be seeing. Even there is a canal by the side of Urban Prime One there that that canal do cause overflow of water that do flood the, that do flood the whole road, that Ogmobo road there. We make sure we clear the channel 
all the coverts that are there, we clear it to make sure there is a free, free flow of water under the channel there. That today now, if it rains, if I thought the whole road is flooded, you can't see a single water inside the urban prime one. Everything is underground, including the lights. That's how we got it done to the point where we are today. Urban Brown project was a very, very important project for me because it was my first major project among the Kiraja houses. Uh, even though I've been involved in other big projects such as Albia Retail Mall, Abeokuta Mall, um, commercial buildings among the Kiraja houses, Urban Brown came with unique challenges, some of each. Some of which includes um, the site location, site topography, availability of construction um, materials and workers, uh, planning of estate infrastructures such as road, electricity, uh, water, sewage treatment plant. All of these came with their uh, various challenges, but we were able to surmount all these challenges through hard work and, uh, uh, and strong will. Uh, Urban Prayer One has really exposed me and it has really made me to believe that everything is possible if you put your mind to it, you work towards it, and you pray. Delivering 2,000 homes is very possible in our calendar, but you know, Based on this, the environment that we operate in, Nigeria, there are a lot of factors that, as you know, we keep researching, we keep doing analysis, we keep doing, I mean, different economic study, different outlook study as well. But very possible, we're going to do the 2000 homes by the end of 2023. But now we have a timeline of 2020, Q4 2024. And at the worst case uh, of Q, uh, Q, Q1 2025, you know, but it's a huge, uh, it's a huge task to take on by one, uh, by one developer. Very, very huge task. Uh, Urban Prime alone is a, is a combination of about 48 hectares, combination of 48 hectares. That's huge. And putting all those infrastructure in place. Uh, the number of artisans that you are going to require, number of contractors you're going to work with, number of partners that you're going to uh, work with as well. So is he, I mean, coordinating all these, all these, all these, uh, all these functions, very, very key. You know, I used to, I used to, uh, play down it. So I thought it was bread and butter. You can just make it happen. But there are several factors that is not totally within your own control. There's, there are several other factors that are, for one house to be completed, one house, you need about 15 different contractors to work on that house. Somebody for tiling, somebody for POP, somebody for woodwork, somebody for aluminum work, somebody for iron work, somebody for uh, painting work, somebody for electrical, somebody for mechanical, a lot of that, lots of that. Somebody, so, and you need multiple suppliers and multiple manufacturers that you're going to be working with. And several things could also be affecting their own uh, their own timeline as well. Delivery. I mean, there are times that we couldn't get a truck of granite as much as we wanted to, you know, you know, to utilize on site. So, these are several factors. But we keep studying these factors and, and it keeps getting better. Uh, finding the right strategy to make it work. And that's what I think is important. You know, the goal is important to us and, uh, and we are very far from where we're coming from. Uh, Urban Prime 1 is completed now. Urban Prime 2 is in calendar for Q4 this year. Urban Prime 3 and 4 is going to follow. Three, uh, uh, 4 also for Q4 this year and or maximum Q1 next year and so all those uh, elements you know we we keep working on them to make sure that we fulfill our promise our goal 
and also our vision. And this is very important to what we represent at the Land Rover brand. Urban Prime One has now gotten to a completion stage. It is with great pleasure and immeasurable honor that we celebrate the completion of Urban Prime One, a dream that is now reality and has come to its full potential. From playing grounds to standing Leverdeer buildings that has proud owners, we still remain in the business of building dreams and establishing legacies.